Warning, zero style is known to cause gas or gear acquisition syndrome, as well as feelings of extreme jealousy. Prolonged exposure to me and my vlog may cause you to buy knives, flashlights, pouches, patches, pocket trash, and other EDC junk you may or may not need. I am extremely lucky, so you may find yourself quite envious watching this video. If I was a Marvel Comics super mutant, my ex name would be Long Shot. You've been warned. Welcome to Zero Style. I am your host, Zero, the cyberspace hero, here to show you some EDC junk this week that's made out of Altum, or Ultum, whatever you want to call it. Ultum or Altum is the branded name for polyethramide, PEI plastic. It's one of the few commercially available thermoplastic that retains its mechanical integrity at extremely high temperatures. Its melting point is 426 degrees Fahrenheit, and it is taking the EDC world by storm. I'm going to show you the thematic setup that I I've got going on with the most popular plastic in the biz. Are you ready? I hope so, because we're about to get into it right now. Like most weeks, your pouch boy extraordinaire has got himself a ZF cup, the smaller size wallet style pouch that I carry either in my front pocket or my cargo pocket, honestly my cargo pocket more often. I am heavy repping the Castle Grey scale this week. We've got the No Luck Game Boy Advance. The Game Over, the Skull Cartridge, the Famicom Pretendo Controller, and then a little bit of JRW Gear RE Club collab action, just because I had a little extra space and I couldn't fit it all together. This is a Zipper Pull by 52 Graves. This is the Woo Cookie in black and gold. My hometown colors for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I've been super into Castle Grayscale lately. I don't know what to say. They're very anime and Nintendo style designs really speak to my nerdy aesthetic, so I'm into it. The inside of the pouch here, you can see our little setup. Got a flashlight, a fidget toy, and some cards. My knife is actually in my physical pants pocket this week because it doesn't exactly fit in a ZF cup comfortably. You can absolutely stick this knife on the exterior pocket here and it fits in there, but this is just, it's not very, it doesn't feel good. Uh, this is more like a, I'm gonna set it on my bedside table because I'm emptying my pockets kind of setup more than how I actually carry this. We're saving that knife for last, you know we are. So let's open up the pouch here. The pouch is set up right here with a divider section here in the front with a large pocket in the back. Then the other half has just two full-size dividers. The back side I carry two cards. I've got a placeholder here for my ID and my debit card, Blockbuster in the exchange, for that nerdy cred. Over here on the other side, we've got my favorite flashlight, straight up and down. There's no two ways around it. I love the Roy Vivon Aurora A9CU flashlight. This thing is 450 lumens, which I think is the perfect amount for EDC use. I got a couple lights with higher and lower lumens than this, and this for me is the sweet spot. It's enough that it's bright and floody and you can see stuff in the dark, but it's not too bright that it's like a mule that everything just turns white in front of your eyes at close range. For me, it's a really important balance to be able to use the flashlight close up and it not absolutely blow away every bit of what you can see. This actually has the Nichia LED in it. You've probably seen this flashlight on my channel before, but I've recently hooked it up with two different new additions. I forced a patina on this light using some liver of sulfur, just speeding up the natural process of oxidizing the outside of this copper to make it look ancient. I've also replaced the old bead with this JRW Gear and Plague Collab Curator Skull Bead. I figured my absolute favorite light deserved to have my absolute favorite lanyard bead. This turns your flashlight into half of a fidget toy worry stone and half a usable tool. So it's a little two in one when you have a lanyard bead that is functional like this on top of a flashlight. Guy easily just slips right here in that split pocket. Easy to figure out which one's the curator and which one is the other fidget. Which we're gonna talk about next. From Zero One EDC, this is the full Ultim Pop. It says Life Loading 2003 right here on the front. It's like some battery and some Wi-Fi signal strength iconography on it. It says 01 EDC here on the back with some hazard style striping. On the actual deployment mechanism, it says T off. I assume that means take off because that's what this thing does. 
So if you watch Lefty EDC's video on YouTube about this, which if you didn't, what are you doing? This channel's great. You just check them out, link in the description. But Lefty has one of these in metal and his had like an impossible time deploying. While I'm watching the video, I'm like, mine is so effortless. Why is he having so much trouble? He disassembled his and adjusted the spring, took a look at the balls and the tension on the inside. And he was able to get his tuned to a way that he liked it. I actually think the metal and the Ultim plastic handle a little bit different. I've seen that exact reaction about how tight the metal ones are from a number of people, but every one of my friends that has an Ultim one has the same experience that I do, that it's almost like too easy to deploy. It's gonna like deploy in your pocket or if you shake it too much. So your mileage may vary, and I think it's very much dependent on what it's actually made out of. That also completely affects the sound, obviously, of this toy. I kind of find the Ultim sound satisfying. I have to admit, I enjoy it. You can see here on the back, I've got a Workerman Fantastic Phantom lanyard bead, also an Ultim, of course, attached to the very large lanyard hole in the corner of this device. See the magnets, the balls that are inlaid inside of it, as well as some of the cool detailing on the outside. Right here, this is where the coiled spring is, where you can adjust the tension on this thing to make it easier or harder to use. That's how the Ultim handles. Now, so let's talk about just the fidget toy in general. I love this thing. It's very reminiscent of the Lauti Shuffle in the fact that it's a little flat thing like this that's very slim and can fit into a pouch or a pocket very easily. I like that it's like a worry stone on its own. It's got feeling to the outside. And the Ultim just is so nice. It's frosted on some of the edges and then it's polished on some of the other ones. So it's got different looks and textures to it that you can enjoy. And then the action. It's just, it's very nice. There's a lot of poppy feedback with it. It jumps almost in your hand. That's why it's nice to have a lanyard bead on the back. So when it does really pop and get that recoil kick, you're not gonna drop it because you've got that lanyard bead in your hand. That's keeping it a hold. The spring is very well tensioned and has a lot of kick. This thing really does take off just like it says on the outside. The pop from Zero One EDC and the Workerman Fantastic Phantom Bead. This week's Ultim Pocket Trash. All right, all right, all right, you're ready for the knife. I get it, I understand. You've been watching me post this thing on Instagram and hyping it up in my stories and you wanna really get my opinion now that I've carried it for almost an entire month. This is the Ultim Zulu. It's a mid-tech by D-Rocket Designs. It's full Ultim scales on both sides. It's got an inlaid deep carry pocket clip. The thumb deployment mechanism, I think, is made out of thermoplastic as well, too. I have mine in the Warncliffe configuration with M390 steel. You can see the little D-Rocket lasering here on the outside of the blade. Very minimal branding. The one side has none on it. The other just says M390 down on the hilt and then the little D-Rocket. Pennsylvania has had a ban on assisted, automatic, and out the front knives for uh, since the 50s. It had to do with gangs and switchblades. There was a lot of racism involved and I'm not gonna get into that. But I've been working with lots of other Pennsylvanians with KnifeRights.org for a while now and we have got the laws on the books changed. It is now absolutely legal to have assisted out the front knives in Pennsylvania. So I've been wanting to get one ever since that happened. I found out about D-Rocket from my buddy Nick at RE Club and he had a really sweet Astro Boy lasered knife from him. So I started following him on Instagram. I saw him posting some really sick OTFs that I could only dream of because of the pricing. And then the day happened. He posted a thing and it said, comment in below and I'm gonna give away two knives to two winners. And you know your boy Longshot won the giveaway. Yes, this is both my most expensive and my cheapest knife in my collection. These retail for 270 some dollars and I got it for nothing. So here's the jealousy part of the video. Go ahead, be mad, let it out. Oh! With that out of the way, I wanna say that I have been rocking this knife almost every day. I've had to force myself to carry my McBeam, my absolute favorite knife, because it's been tough getting this thing out of my pocket. 
Part of that is new knife life, right? When you get a new knife, you're obsessed with it, you want to check it out and feel it out. Every new knife becomes your favorite knife a lot of the time. So I know part of that is that. Even though I got it for free, I've been trying to treat this like a $300 knife that I bought. That I actually spent my real hard money on to test and see would I be happy for spending that amount of money on a knife. I have other knives that are close to that amount, but it's a good solid $100 jump. I fucking love this knife. I'm so happy Daniel sent me the Warncliffe version of this instead of the spear point. I personally am not a stab somebody in the face kind of knife guy. I'm the type of knife user that does it like a craft knife, cutting open boxes, getting packaging open, popping a zip tie, things like that. I think having the top part of this knife available for you to get extra pressure on makes it so much more utilitarian. This is a little big for my liking. The fact that it doesn't fit in the pouch, it's a little bit disappointing for me. So I've been back on the actual pocket carry, but I'm very pleased to show you how deep this knife rides in the pocket. It just vanishes. All you can see is that little bit of pocket clip poking out. Very nice. It's slim profile, very thin. The machining is insane on this thing. Your hand slides in and out effortlessly and does not get caught up on this knife in your pocket. It's so comfortable to wear there. So let's talk about this knife. The machining on this thing is insane. You see these little lines and ridges right here on the scale? It just leads your thumb right up to this deployment switch. It feels so good, it's almost like a worry stone. I absolutely catch myself fidgeting with this knife by not even opening it. Just spinning it around in between my fingers, rubbing it up and down like this. When it's in your pocket, even and feel those scales and have a little bit of tactile experience with your knife. You can see right here how much this actually moves up before the actual deployment takes place. It's the same with retraction. Look how much I can move this down before it actually retracts. That's great for in the pocket. You might actually have this amount of motion, but it really takes a lot to overcome it. I mean, it's not impossible, it's not hard to do, but it's difficult. And that's what you want in an OTF. You don't want this thing accidentally deploying. Let me rephrase that. That's what you want in a knife always. You don't want your knife to accidentally deploy in your pocket, no matter what style it is. What's D-A-O-T-F mean? Double action, out the front, knife. Double action means the same button pushing up, versus pushing down will pull this thing up and down. Certain OTF knives you have to set a different way manually. A double action means the same button deploys and retracts the knife. OTF means out the front. Literally the blade comes out the front of the knife. There is no locking mechanism to close it or anything like that. It's built into the design internals of this knife. That being said, once it is in or out, it is locked and it is not coming out. In my research, I've heard that all OTFs have a little bit of blade play. I do want to show you the amount of blade play that's on this guy. There is none going up and down. A tiny little bit on the Y axis. The t even less on the X. So Z axis, totally locked in. X axis, slight. Y axis, ever so slight. This is a very, very nice knife. There is n almost no blade play in this thing at all. Really enjoy the tuning of this knife. This knife is a mid-tech. That means that this is not a full production run and it's not a full custom. It's somewhere in the middle. You actually have some of the parts being machined, some of the parts being made by hand. I actually asked the knife maker to tell me exactly what that meant, and he told me the ultum or body is machined and then vapor and hand finished. Guide grind is put on with the CNC, then finished by hand with a fixture. Those are his exact words in our chat. That means that these parts were cut by machines and then finished by hand and built by hand. The maker of this knife put his hands on it, put the grind on it, put it all together in this thing, tested it, QC'd it, made sure it was good to go. Because this knife is phenomenal. For bigger knives, for me, my opinion, bigger knives, this is my favorite bigger knife now. As I said before, some of this is probably new knife honeymoon aesthetics, but at the same time, I really, really love this knife. The Ultim is beautiful. It is so well machined. M390 is gorgeously sharp and slicey. 
Just take a look at the spine on this thing. Look how thick it is behind and then how thin it is on the edge. This is a stout little knife for how it's ground. I really enjoy these ridges on the deployment mechanism. They feel really good. They're smooth, but yet they have some grip to them. On the side, you can see where the screws are inset into the Ultim. They're nice and deep, and they actually can go a lot deeper than they are. I think that's a design feature to keep them from cracking. And then these flat spots here on the back, these are designed for your finger to get a little bit of extra grip. Believe it or not, these ridges that lead your fingers up and down don't actually help you get a lot of grip. These spots here in the Ultim where they don't exist gives you that perfect spot for your finger to pinch when you're grabbing and gripping with your thumb on the deployment mechanism. See our deep carry clip here? It goes all the way around and is machined into the inner component of the knife. Can't adjust it, can't flip it. It is the way it is. I love the translucent effects and being able to see the blade inside the scale. The Warncliffe also really trips you out. You expect this to be a sharp on the other side of the knife when you see it through. And then when it deploys, you're like, oh my goodness, did you deploy that knife backwards? Nope, it's a Warny. I really enjoy this knife. I have almost nothing negative to say about it. I would put the, the screws on the back side. I would make it a tiny little bit shorter. That's it, man. This thing is near perfection. God tier, 11 out of 10 top of my collection right now, knives. All right, we're gonna show the keys off this week. I don't know why, I'm just gonna do it a little different. This is the Quiet Carry Shorty. This is made out of blackened titanium all the way through. It is a liner lock and it's got a little multi-tool on the inside. They actually make these that have a knife insert, but I don't have one. This is allegedly TSA friendly, though I've never actually tried it. You can see on the front, we've got a pry bar slash flathead screwdriver slash nail puller. Got a rope cutter, a bottle opener, a little bit of jimping here on the back and a thumb stud for you to deploy it. It's marked as AUS8 steel. I don't know what that is. Nice little liner lock here. Absolutely one hand deployment on this thing. It's very easy for you to get both the tool as well as the keys out with this thing one handed with no problem without even looking. And the more you practice, obviously, the easier it's gonna get. And you can make it looser or tighter, however it works best for you to be able to just quickly one-handedly deploy your keys. This thing uses T8 screws. Shout out to my Journey Tool Company. My Carta and Dirty Dog Copper bit driver here. So we're gonna unscrew this and I'll show you on the inside. Little Lefty Lucy right here. You can see there is a spot for a clip. I've removed that because I don't pocket carry it. This goes on my key ring. Inside, it is just a stack of keys and washers. The washers allow the keys to effortlessly slide back and forth on the little ring and also keeps them in place and thick enough that they don't start bending and going diagonally. Generally, they suggest that you put one washer between each key and one washer on the outside and the inside. It comes with a shorter and larger size risers or spacers here in the middle for however many keys you want to put in. I'm a two key man myself, so mine is just going washer, key, washer, key, washer on the inside here, and it fits perfect, two keys. It is a little thick with the multi-tool, I will be completely honest with you, but it is solid and it's been a great key organizer for a few years now. My Journey Tool Company bit driver got that coupled up with the Root Beer Imposter base. The imposters don't spin, they're flat on the bottom. You can see the Journey Tool Company branding hidden here underneath where you'll never see it because this is a desk piece. This thing holds 10 hardened quarter inch Weeha bits perfectly, as well as the driver right here on the top. Makes a very nice desk piece. You can use it as a fidget toy, as well as an organizer to keep all of your screwdriver kit put together. This is my Workerman Ultim hook. It's a pretty simple tool right here. It is basically just a carabiner replacement, a little belt or pocket hook. Allows you to put something on it right here. I'm gonna use a hank as an example, but you could do this with your pocket. You could do this with a belt loop. It just hooks on there. There's a little dent in the hook that allows it to sort of grab onto the material and stick there and not fall off. This is my favorite really simple Ultum, of course, because that's the theme, right? Key, hook, 
just works really great. Workerman keeps making them, so I suggest you pick one up when you can. I don't like hard key rings. I like these little flexible ones. They're very cheap. You get them in like a 10 pack on Amazon. They screw on and off and they're nigh unbreakable. I've not had any issues with them. I've used them for a couple different applications besides keys too, but that's another topic. On top of the key organizer, I've got my Kia key. My little number one dad keychain that my wife gave me, just a little bit of double-sided tape sticking it to my key fob. And that's it. I try and keep my keys as minimal as possible. You do you with your keys. Just wanted to show off my set this week, because why not? Well, that is the video for this week. I hope you enjoyed this ultimate setup. If you did, give me a like. It's the free social currency here on YouTube. Click my face down here to subscribe if you haven't already. Click these boxes appearing around my face as I do this outro if you wanna watch more of my videos right now. And if no one has told you today, you are a rad person who deserves love and praise just like everybody else in this world. Get out there today, have some fun, be nice, and I'll see you in the next one later on.